Going down the chain of command in the newsroom, the publisher is in charge of everything at the newspaper. That's where the buck stops. The production manager is in charge of production, overseeing all staff and printing equipment. The circulation manager supervises distribution, getting the newspaper on newsstands and to subscribers. And finally, the advertising manager coordinates the sales of displays and classified ads, and sometimes is also in charge of marketing the newspaper to subscribers and potential subscribers. On the editorial side, the editor runs the newsroom, having the final say on story selection and news philosophy. The managing editor is the editor's second in command, handling day-to-day -day operation and staffing issues. The newspaper's photo editor assigns photos and photographers to go with stories and manages the photo staff. The designer places stories, photos, and design elements on the page once they're copy edited. The design editor also manages graphic artists and illustrators that work for the paper. The online editor works to develop content for the website and adopt stories for online publication. The online editor may also have a team of reporters and editors. The copy desk chief oversees editing, and if there's no design editor, the layout of the newspaper. The copy desk chief also manages a team of copy editors. The features editor assigns and edits feature stories, manages the feature staff. Now, sometimes there's sub-features editors, like an arts and entertainment editor or business editor. The sports editor assigns and edits sports stories and manages the sports staff. The city editor, or sometimes just called the news or metro editor, assigns and edits news stories and manages the news staff, while the opinion editor assigns and edits editorials and columns while managing the opinion staff. Now that you know who does it, what's it called? A daily is a newspaper that is printed every day, or at least four days per week. It doesn't necessarily have to be all seven. A weekly is printed once a week, always on the same day. Now some newspapers print two or three days a week, like every Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, or every Tuesday and Thursday. You might also have a bi-weekly that is printed once every two weeks. Next, you have a broadsheet. This is a large format newspaper, while a tabloid is roughly half the size of a broadsheet. Now, in this context, a tabloid refers only to the size of the newspaper and not its content. Now, the National Enquirer, for example, is both a tabloid in size and a tabloid in content. For the next few slides, you might want to use the newspaper mock-up on pages 28 and 29 of the text to follow along. First, you have the headline. This is the big type, written by copy editors, that summarizes the story at the very top. The byline is the reporter's name, followed by credentials, like staff writer or section editor. Dateline gives the location of the story that happened outside the paper's normal coverage area. The lead is the beginning of the story, typically the first one or two paragraphs. Next is the quote. This is someone's exact words enclosed by quotation marks. Attribution is a phrase that tells readers the source of a quote or information that's used in the story. The photo is a picture it can run in either color or black and white. Next is what's called the photo credit. This is a line identifying the photographer who took the photo. Next is a pull quote, sometimes called a lift out. This is a quotation from the story that's given special graphic emphasis. It's pulled out of the paper to pull in readers. Then you have what's called the tagline. This is contact information for the reporter at the end of the story 
that allows readers to provide feedback. Beyond the parts of the story, there's a few parts of the newspaper itself that you should know. First is the flag. This is the paper's nameplate, the name of the paper, often set in special type. The edition is a specified issue of the paper. Now, some papers print more than one edition, one for street sales and others for delivery to subscribers in different parts of their circulation area. An infographic is a chart or graph that visually displays key facts from a story. And then a deck. This is a subheadline written by copy editors that supplements information in the main headline. Text is the story. These are measured in columns and inches. A jump line is used when a page one story continues on an inside page. Editors label the story with a keyword and run the jump line to tell readers where the story continues. A cut line is information about a photo that is collected by photographers, but usually written by reporters or copy editors. It often appears just below the photo. I prefer to call it a caption. And finally, you have a teaser, sometimes also called a promo or a skybox. This is an item at the top of page one designed to grab readers' attention so that they'll pick up and purchase the paper. A refer is information embedded in a story that alerts readers that another story on the topic appears elsewhere in the paper. What's called a wire story is a story written by a reporter working for a national news service like the Associated Press. The story is sent to papers nationwide and is not written by someone at that specific newspaper. A mugshot is a close-up photo of someone's face. It's often run small and with columns to identify writers or to show an image that's the focus of the story. Finally, you have the centerpiece. This is the top story of the day, chosen by editors because of its newsworthiness or reader appeal. It's placed in the most prominent position of the paper with the biggest headline. It can be a feature story as well. The index is a list on page one and of stories and features that will appear inside the paper. You might also see a logo. This is a small, specifically designed title, often with art, that's used for labeling special stories or parts of a series. Finally, what do you need to be an effective journalist? A notebook with a pen or a mechanical pencil. A tape recorder. If possible, always ask permission before recording an interview. Now, North Carolina is what's called a one-party consent state. As long as one person in the conversation has consented to it being recorded, it's legal. Now, this is not true in every state. So if you move outside of North Carolina, be sure to check the state laws. You'll want a computer so you can type up your story and learn how to type relatively quickly. You'll also want a camera. Now you might not always get a photographer assigned to your story, especially in breaking news situations. And finally, a good telephone can replace the tape recorder and the camera.